excited to have a special guest with us this morning to talk about a very special project that you have been working on for months now. Aaron Hazanzada joins us now on Mid Morning to talk about a WCCO original. It's called On the Edge. Yes, the people and polar bears of a warming Arctic. And I'm so excited. This is the first day. This is launch day, uh, not for Gail and right. also for <laughs> 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 So at 4 o'clock today, you'll be able to watch it on our YouTube page. But I'm really excited to get into it and let people know what they can expect from this WCCO original. And we've got a clip right now. Let's yeah. give a preview. How close are we to the tipping point, or are we already there? It's a bit hard to tell. In an individual year, bears can do well. There's a lot of variation from year to year. The downward trend is very clear. Are we doing enough? We're probably not doing enough. Right now, the risk for them disappearing in this region, it's quite substantial, given how slow the progress is towards reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Should we take a break? Do you want to just get this? <laughs> These guys want to get by. Can we move ahead? Um, we can in half a second. Okay. Yeah, he's saying wait. Yeah, we can't move now. It's right down here. Oh, yeah, we're not going you. anywhere. No. <laughs> That's what we're waiting for. Another thing about this population is it makes for a kind of good harbinger. This will be one of the first populations to go if the warming scenario we're currently in continues. Yes, the Western Hudson Bay subpopulation is one of the groups that is expected to disappear first. Five years from now, I probably expect polar bears to be here. I'd be surprised if they were not. Ten years from now, things really start to get fuzzy. And 20 to 30 years from now, certainly within my lifetime, unless things change, I expect to at some point not be able to come up here and see polar bears. So Aaron, this was just a short clip in a you know 45 minute or so documentary that you have produced. Um, talk to us before we get into the polar bears, because we want to learn more about them. Where are you in this documentary? How did this come about? Yeah, so we went up to Churchill, Manitoba this fall in November is when we actually took the trip. And this is a big trip for tourists, for scientists. People come from all over the world. It has this distinction as the polar bear capital of the world, Churchill, Manitoba, because it's the easiest place in the world to go see polar bears. Mm. So it's basically Churchill and then Svalbard, Norway, which is very remote, yeah. and that's the place where humans and bears can overlap and it's very unique because polar bears love remote, cold, harsh conditions that are not hospitable to us. So it's a unique spot on the map. And really it's about our commitment to covering climate. Mm -hmm. And this story, while it can feel a little far away, it's not that far, no. by the mm -hmm. way, Churchill. But as Joseph can attest, it is a warning for all of us. It is sort of our future, mm -hmm. what the bears are going through, what this community is going through, is a warning to us all. And we learn that what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay there. I'm curious to know how many polar bears, because we saw you the polar bears in that clip there. Yes. How many polar bears did you actually see oh. during your excursion when you were out there? Like, was it just normal, common to see polar bears? Yeah. Well, you learn when you land. I said, well, what am I, what do I need to know? Yeah. I've never been walking around a town where I might be able to run into a polar yeah. bear, which can happen. Mm -hmm. And they tell you, don't walk alone. You know, try to stay close to your hotel or wherever yeah. you're going at night. You always walk in pairs. You take wide turns. Um, so it's interesting to be in a place where people live alongside bears. Um, but yeah, we probably saw 30 out on the tundra. Oh, wow, okay. So the one you saw there, that's when you go out on those big tundra vehicles. They're mm -hmm. called tundra buggies. And that's really when we went out with the scientists from Polar Bears International. We probably saw 30 out in their natural habitat, which is so incredible, right? Wow. Some of us have seen them at a zoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to see them just living their daily life was, was the most incredible part. We saw three um, in town, I guess, like right, right outside of town. We drove out to kind of the outskirts. So wow. probably 30, 40 bears. That's wild. I'm we, wondering, oh, go for it. Well, I mean, we just, I've seen so many clips, but it's the first time I've seen that one. Do yes. all of the polar bears, like, do they approach you with curiosity like yeah. that? So I mean, it well, how active is it? It depends. So sometimes if they've been in that area for a long time, they're used to people. They're yeah. used to those vehicles and they're not as curious. What happened this year is a little unusual. There were some from the South Bay. This is the Hudson Bay, mm -hmm. edge of the Arctic, uh, connects to the Arctic. Um, some of the Southern bears got washed up on the west side. Okay. So they were explaining some of the more curious bears might be new to the area and they're kind of like, what is this thing? Yeah, I better yeah. go check it out. So that's what you saw there. Wheel. Okay. Mm -hmm. why, why Churchill? 
And I, I also wonder, do, do, mm -hmm. do the locals know not to feed them? I mean, know yes. that this is part of their natural habitat. What is it about this spot that all of these bears have come to for all these years? Yeah, so it's sort of a spot on the map that just so happens to be in the path of this polar bear migration. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they are waiting for the ice to form on the Hudson Bay. And when it's frozen, that's when they take to the ice and they go back to their homes on the sea ice. That's the journey. That is where they want to be. Here's why. They need to hunt from those ice platforms. They eat predominantly seal. Mm -hmm. That's what they eat. That's the majority of their diet. And when they're on land for the summer, which is very short in Churchill, uh, they basically fast. They're just laying around. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you saw. They're killing time mm -hmm. uh, when we're there with them on the tundra. They're killing time until their homes on the frozen sea ice is, is ready for them to go back out and bulk up for the year ahead. I, I guess the million dollar question mm -hmm. is then if they can't venture out because there's not enough sea ice, then what happens with the polar bears? I guess they stay in Churchill, they stay on the yep. mainland, is that the... So they stay in town longer, and yeah. this is the concern of scientists that you'll hear about, because this is a very emotional story. It's about this town of 870 people, mm -hmm. Churchill, right, and, and the people fighting to protect their lifestyle and their way of life yeah. in the north, and they're representative of what's happening in the Arctic more broadly. But um, yeah, with the polar bears themselves, they are really struggling with this. Scientists are worried about it. We know as we lose sea ice, we lose bears. That's what's happened in Churchill. And you'll actually see later this week, we went 30 years ago. Don Shelby went up to Churchill 30 mm, years ago. Wow. Is that? Interesting, because at the time he went, and I was texting with him, just double checking, no talk of climate change. Mm, I mean, this yeah. was only 30 years ago, and this is a community that is on the front lines of climate change now. Yeah. It was not part of the conversation, the discourse, and that's pretty recent. Yeah. So to think of what we've done, right. uh, unfortunately, to, to make it tough for them in 30 years is, is pretty incredible as now, well. You talk to scientists in this documentary, mm -hmm. but from what I understand, you also profile a family yes. up there. Tell yes. us about them. Oh, you're going to meet the dailies, and there's a lot to love. This is three generations of a Churchillian family, which is sort of rare. I mean, you think about it, 870 people, there's three kids that are Noah's age. You're going to meet a little three-year-old, mm -hmm. Noah, his dad and his grandpa, and, and they really speak to, yes, what is worth protecting? I think we understand that um, certain species may be threatened by a warming Arctic, by our warming planet, but also people and their lifestyles, and polar bears are very connected to the culture of Churchill. They're connected to the livelihood of Churchill, and uh, you'll see with this family that they're really hoping to continue this tradition mm -hmm. of living in Churchill. Uh, they're, they're a dog sledding family, mm -hmm. so if you're a dog person, you're going right. to love them too. Um, yeah, but they just really speak to what will be lost if we don't fight to protect it's this place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, On the Edge, again, as Aaron said, makes its premiere today at Yay. 4 p.m. We just got a little sneak preview yep. here. You can watch it on WCCO's YouTube page. You can also learn more by grabbing your phone. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen, get you where you need to go to. We're also going to be teaming up with some community partners to offer up some really fun viewing opportunities for you. Yeah, for example, on Friday, April 18th, that's this Friday, you can join Aaron and a free viewing at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. She'll be there from 11:30 until 1 p.m. You can watch the documentary. Stick around for the Q&A afterwards to get your free tickets. Just go to our website wccl.com/ontheedge. And then on Earth Day, which is April 22nd, you can head on over to the Como Zoo. They'll have a free showing there. That event goes from 5 until 7 p.m. Also offer a Q&A once again with the crew because Erin didn't do this alone. There was a wonderful crew there with her, uh, working just as hard as she did. All of that information is up there on our website.